But let's move on into the next topic. Before we do, make sure to go on to Apple Podcast and rate and review the Primetime Podcast. Every five-star rating we get really helps up the show, gets us into the ears of more people. So if you guys can go and do that, it would mean the world to us. Let's segue into, we were talking about AD, we were talking about the Lakers and that fourth pick. And let's look at a guy who many think is going to be a top five pick, for Mm -hmm. sure top ten pick in the draft and Jarrett Culver. I'm changing the title on the fly slightly because originally I was going to ask you, should the Lakers take Jarrett Culver at four? However, there's two kind of rumors out there when it comes to Jarrett Culver. There's the ones that he worked out with the um, Lakers and now they really like him and that he's a strong option for the number fourth pick. Mm -hmm. There's also rumors out of Atlanta that the Atlanta Hawks are centering, and I'm looking right now from peachtreehoops.com, Atlanta Hawks reportedly centering on Jarrett Culver as primary target in trade scenarios. So the question I will ask you is not the should the Lakers take him, yeah. like we said, is will Jarrett Culver be a Laker or a Hawk on draft night? I If I have to pick between those two? Like, the like odds gun to are, my head? If who do you think like there's is only he gonna, two teams? Is he gonna go fourth to the Lakers or are the Hawks gonna make a trade with like the Cavs at five? So which one's more likely? Is and which one's asking? gonna happen? Yeah. Um, not, which, I don't know if not gun to head, yeah. but what do you think? Because those, those two happen? aren't the only options. Mm-hmm. I, I I my thinking is the Cavs like him too. That's the thing is I, I'm my thinking is if he falls to the Cavs at five, mm-hmm. I'm not taking eight ten. For for Culver, I, I, I even think that's an overpay for the Atlanta. I don't think mm-hmm. Atlanta is going to offer eight ten to get Culver, um, and I don't think eight seventeen is enough for the Cavs. So I think the Cavs will just take Culver. Mm-hmm. So I would say that what's more likely that then is just I think the Lakers taking them mm-hmm. um, out of those two scenarios because I think it's going to be tough for Atlanta to find a trade partner, and also I think if they're genuinely thinking about what they can do. Not only do they love Jared Culver, and that's just for trade scenarios, um, I, I think they also love Cam Reddish, too. Mm-hmm. I, I've heard rumors that they do really like him. Um, and if they do really like him, just take him at eight. Like, that's that's the thing, too. And mm-hmm. if you feel like he's going to go at any point like that, you have a ton of second-round capital to yeah. move up that, that extra spot. Um, so I think if they miss out on Culver, they might start to panic. But I think they do have backup plans in place. So I think... What's more likely, Hawks take trading up and getting Culver or the Lakers taking Culver? Mm-hmm. I will take the Lakers taking Culver. Yeah, and I mean, the Lakers are the interesting one, and that was the one that really what sparked this for me because it kind of seemed like early on, so like right after the combine, it was like, oh, they may might have made a promise to Darius Garland and are going to take him with four. I know our post-lotto um, it was her post combine one was you were high on Garland. You're like, Oh, Lakers are going to do it. I'm like, "Ah, I don't know if they do. Um, Then I started to lean more towards, Oh, they'll probably take Garland because they promised them. And then this rumor comes out um, that they really like Jarrett Culver. I think the big thing for the Lakers with me of why they might think Culver over Garland is yes. A lot of people are going to put in the, that Darius Garland was working out with LeBron and that mm-hmm. whole connection with LeBron. He's a clutch agent, a clutch yeah. client. And they also mentioned how, like, oh, well, you know, LeBron needs a guy like Kyrie to win a championship. He needs that point guard that he can lean on in situations. Yeah, look at the Miami Heat. Yeah, exactly. Um, which, that, that Kyrie Irving, that Mario Chalmers. Which me, with me, I kind of am now thinking of, like, maybe Jer Culver could be a better option at four for the mm-hmm. Lakers only because what's the one thing that everyone has said the Lakers need after they signed LeBron? Someone who can shoot. And yeah. Darius well, Garland can shoot. Plus, he I think I think that not Darius Garland, Jarrett Culver, Culver. can shoot. Well, I also can think Both of them can. that Jarrett Culver is going to be a really good I'm not gonna go as far and say amazing, but I think he's gonna be a really good and really solid two way player at the next level, and that's what's going to pay dividends next to LeBron. Yeah, I think the biggest 
thing that stands out for me because I, I am having that argument in my head, either Garland or Culver. Mm-hmm. Um, immediately after the the tournament, I was leaning towards Garland. Um, I love his his release, and if we're talking about an offensive player, I think that he could be uh, an absolute stud. But mm-hmm. the thing that it boils down to that I, I'm kind of leaning on is if they're picking for the Lakers, what's going to be the best game plan for them? And that is taking Culver because taking Garland and then having Lonzo on the team, it's just you're you're automatically t- you know putting that guy on the bench. And I think you still need to help this starting lineup. And while Reggie Bullock is a decent three point shooter, he's not a starter. Um, KCP definitely not a starter. And, mm-hmm. and thank God they only sent him to a one year deal. So I think if you are in that fourth position, you're not trading it for AD. You're going Jared Culver because. That way you can see somewhat of a, a starting lineup take place around LeBron James. Uh, let's say there's no free agent move, there's no trades. Lonzo, Culver, Ingram, LeBron, and then whoever the five will be. Um, mm-hmm. Or if you want to put LeBron at the five and yeah. you know, have Kuzma at the four or whatever. Or if they make that AD trade, AD would be at the five. But Culver's not on the team. True, that fourth pick so, would be moved. Um, You're right. It, it, so I think the thing that you know, if they bring back Javale, um, or Boogie Cousins, mm-hmm. whatever, um, if it comes down to though, you you need to fill out that two two guard spot, and I, mm-hmm. I think Culver is your best position if you're not getting rid of Lonzo Ball. Um, if you're getting rid of Lonzo, then go with Darius because point guard is way more crucial than having a two guard because pretty much at that two guard spot, you just need a guy who can play three and D and you can find guys out there, especially to play next to LeBron. If you are a good enough GM, I don't know if Rob Palenka is, um, but if you are a good enough GM, you can find those players. So if it comes down to it, it's just, what is this team looking like and what are we, what are odds to get AD? And with that, if it's just worth keeping this player, I'm going Garland because I think his fit mm-hmm. next to LeBron would be very nice. I think he also has a great work ethic that showed from his growth from his freshman to sophomore year. And if he brings that in the NBA, I think he can work his tail off. I don't, I'm not high on him necessarily. I'm more high on Garland. Um, but I see more of a route for Culver to succeed. Mm-hmm. I think the natural talent leans more towards Garland. But what we've seen from Culver is that he has a great makeup and he has a great drive. And although I didn't like the way that he performed in the national championship game against Virginia, I didn't like the way he his overall tournament turned out to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he can be the guy to step up and take shots. Clay can be a guy like that. Yeah. I don't think uh, Culver has cool. that in him, but I do think that he can be a very good complementary piece to who I still think is the best player in the NBA mm-hmm. in the front shapes. Well, and the thing and ultimately that I, that's what you want to be drafting. Yeah, is players who are going to compliment your best players. And I mean, in that kind of final four, I'll say, with the last two games, especially that last one, he is not a guy where it's like, all right, put me on the like basically Kevin Durant style, like put me on the ISO. I'm going to drive. I'm going to go at someone. That's not Jared Culver's game. Um, and by having a guy like a LeBron next to him who can say like, hey. I know we'd love to say, hey, LeBron wants to play more off ball. Guess what? LeBron's not going to play off ball. Well, he could because he's the best he can, player in the NBA. But he can still play off ball with if they if they don't. But it's move not going to be but, a one hundred percent LeBron off ball. No, but but having Lonzo and having mm-hmm. Brandon Ingram, he does still have that ability to play yeah. off ball. And even then, if he's playing off ball, it doesn't mean he's not going to pass the ball. Mm-hmm. Like, if he gets the ball in the low post, if yeah. he gets double teamed, LeBron's smart enough to pass it out. And if he's mm-hmm. passing it out to Jared Culver, who hit, like, 36% of his his uh, his catch-and-shoot threes, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's really good for an NBA percentage mm-hmm. if that carries over. So I, I think that if Culver knows his role and being next to LeBron, it's going to be mainly catch and shoot. The kid's going to work his ass off to be a you know above average mm-hmm. three-point shooter. And it might not be right away. It might take him two months to get there. But if we're getting into the February, March, April grind of the season, mm-hmm. we might see Jared Culver really shine as, as a player if he's you know been told his role, been working towards his role, yeah. and getting those reps in that role. I think that he could really grow into a nice player next to LeBron. But it just all boils down to whether the Lakers are keeping that pick mm-hmm. or not. Well, and I mean, there's that. Plus, I feel like the other side of it is what you brought up with Lonzo Ball. Is if you're gonna move Lonzo, then Darius Garland becomes the easiest pick because you're getting rid of a point guard. You need to bring a point guard in. And the thing that I think is the early reports were, ooh, the Suns and the um 
Bulls are the two teams. But then when you started to look at it and kind well, of time went on, there was, uh, I hope I get his last name right, um, John Gambadoro, um, who is a, he's a host on the Afternoon the Drive yeah, for the Suns, yeah. had a tweet where he basically said, first it was the, we're not trading the six pick for Lonzo. Then basically last week he said, Suns are not shopping the six pick for a veteran point guard as per reports. A few names to keep an eye on in free agency are Corey Joseph, Pat Bev, Darren Collison, TJ McConnell. So really right away it's like, all right, one suitor for the Lakers is out. How about the Bulls? Well, if on the Bulls... Well, hold on, wait, wait. What are we talking about? So oh, the Suns, oh, the that's Suns, veteran point guard. Lonzo's yeah. not a veteran. Originally, though, they were saying that the Suns were going to trade the six pick for Lonzo. Well, mm-hmm. now if the Suns aren't even going to trade the six pick for a point guard, they're out. No, you're not going to trade. You're misreading Lonzo it. They that. said veteran, veteran point guard. Lonzo's I know, not a veteran. But point Lonzo guard. was thrown into that discussion. The point is, okay. they're not trading it for Lonzo. All right. Um. Then the Bulls. Well, if on the Bulls, the Heavy rumor is that we gave a promise to Kobe White. He's probably going to be there at seven unless the Suns are the team that takes him before us. So if I'm the Bulls, I'm not going to trade the seventh for Lonzo because the guy that I promised is going to be there. Well, so on. that means Lonzo's not getting moved. First off, I- we don't know if those promises are real. And mm-hmm. even if they're real, we don't know if those front offices are going to keep those promises. The, so bull, the Bulls are a the team The Bulls are going to do what they want to do in the, their and, and do what's in their best interest. The thing I will say about the Bulls, though, is last year it was, man, the Bulls have a heavy promise with Chandler Hutchinson for the 21st pick. 22nd. Their 22nd pick. The Bulls are a team where usually if the rumor is out that they promise someone, they're going to take you. Okay. Um, so that's why I'm feeling like— well, Okay, but if that happens, mm-hmm. what if Garland goes— Two or sorry, going goes uh, four to the Lakers, mm-hmm. and then Kobe White goes to the Suns. Bye bye, promise. What are mm-hmm. you gonna do? Are you gonna go after Lonzo Ball and get get him with the seventh overall pick? So in that situation, then it becomes open. Um, but for the Lakers, the question I will ask there is: if Lonzo's on the team and a Lonzo trade isn't done before draft night, do you draft thinking we're still gonna move him? Or are you drafting thinking he's going to be on this team but long the, term? The deal doesn't need to be done for mm-hmm. it to be in motion because you could still have a plan. So if their mm-hmm. plan is to trade Lonzo, then, I mean, I, I think they'll go into draft night knowing what they want to do. And clearly we'll see that once the fourth pick uh, happens. Because even, but even could, if AD gets traded, Lonzo's probably going to be a part of that deal even if it's after draft night. Yeah, I, I think that pretty much it's just going to tell the tale of, where they're going to go in in their direction Mm -hmm. if they go Garland at four because then that leaves Lonzo open and they could possibly go after the sixth pick. They can go after the seventh pick. Mm -hmm. Um, They obviously can go after Anthony Davis. Um, But even if they take that, if they take Garland with the fourth, he's either going to be going to that AD deal or Lonzo's Mm -hmm. gone. Um, If they're not able to get AD, he goes to Boston. I still think Lonzo would be gone. I I think that that would be what, what happens. And if they get the, you know, seventh pick, that could mean DeAndre Hunter, and that way you can fill out that you know that that rotation even more a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, get a guy who can play the four, play great defense, shoot from the outside, and he could be more of a starter next to LeBron, where Kuzma and uh, you could have you know interesting uh, rotations off the bench, uh, where you have uh, you know Kuzma coming off the bench and being your bench scorer. Uh, Josh Hart could be in the starting lineup. Uh, you could have a lot of interesting things happen with that. So I think it's it's going to be dependent if they go with Culver at the four. Um, most likely, they're either pushing for an AD trade only, uh, or we're just going to keep. And we're either going to keep go after AD, um, or we're going to keep that this team the way it is. Uh, or if they go Garland, he's either you know the player that the Pelicans like the most, or mm-hmm. Lonzo's gone. Here's a question I want to ask you in this situation because, of course, there's this time of the eight days before the draft, everything is like, oh, they're high on this guy, high on that guy. One of the things that people are saying is there's a possibility that the Suns are high on Brandon Clark. Had a private workout with them um, mm-hmm. about a day or two ago in Phoenix. Um, Brandon Clark being from Phoenix, take that um, as you may. The first question I'll ask is with the Suns, what would your reaction be on draft night if the six pick came and they come to the podium and with the six pick the Phoenix Suns take 
Brandon Clark. Absolute whiff. Be a horrible idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at their wing rotation right now, and yes, you don't have a four, and I know that's a big need for them. I know point guard and four are the biggest needs for him, uh, for the Suns, but looking at Josh Jackson, he's already a plus defender when he's on, and that was the big thing, at least draft, you know, scouting wise when he was coming in, mm-hmm. uh, was that he was going to be a plus defender. You have TJ Warren, you have uh, Kelly Oubre, who you could possibly resign as a, an RFA. There are still wings out there that you can still play, you know, a little bit more small ball. You can get interesting with your lineups. You don't have to have a traditional four. And if that means passing up a guy like DeAndre Hunter, who's more of a first share fired thing at that four spot, Mm -hmm. um, or that three, four hybrid again, if you're going positions basketball, I I think that'd be a major misstep because DeAndre Hunter, while he might not be as aggressive and as, as, as locked in as Brandon Clark is defensively, he is still very good defensively. And he brings that plus already of being an outside shooter. Mm-hmm. And Clark does not do that, and Clark needs to bring that. Uh, Clark needs to develop that if he wants to be a, a good two-way player in the NBA. And if you're pairing him with DeAndre Ayton, DeAndre Ayton works a large, uh, probably 40 to 55% out of the post and definitely below the line area. Well, that's where Clark's going to work as well. And, and Ayton can definitely stretch, stretch the floor out. Um, he could definitely take it from the top of the key. Um, we've seen him shoot threes before in, in, in college, and he might be developing and working on this, that part of his game now to bring it fully over to the NBA. Um, so there might be a stretch element to his game at some point, but right now he is not deadly like, you know, Carl Anthony Towns or a uh, or a Kristaps Porzingis was uh, mm-hmm. when, when uh, Kristaps was healthy. So I think that would be a bad fit offensively for them. Defensively, it would make sense. But if DeAndre, if DeAndre Hunter is on the board, why would you pass him up? Mm-hmm. Um, if Cam Reddish is on the board, why would you pass him up? Because Cam Reddish showed that he could be a plus defender and he could shoot from the outside. Um, he's not going to be a lights out shooter right away. But again, if you're putting him in a certain role, I think he could be. I think he'd be helpful. Um, and you're also passing up the role that we've been talking about for the past three years <laughs> in point guard for the mm-hmm. Phoenix Suns. So I, I think it would be a major misstep if they went Brian Clark. Because, like, the thing that I'm looking at and kind of the, I don't know if you want to say the writing on the wall or if you want to say just a, because in every draft there's somebody that falls. Somebody that's like, whoa, we had him a lot higher than he ended up going. Was there a guy like that last year? I almost feel like, I thought there was. I thought wasn't Miles Bridges that guy last year? No, Miles Bridges. We had was, him no. higher than we. I thought we had him way higher than. No, I think the highest we had him was the Knicks, was which was nine. He fell to eleven. I'm gonna look. Fell. It up. So I think I had him at the Hornets at some point for a mock draft, or someone had him at the, the Hornets in the mock draft. Technically, if you ask Dave, Luca was a big fall from one to three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I mean. Colin Sexton at eight. I don't think that was a fall. I think last year was more. Oh. Michael Porter Jr. But that was – but that's not a – That was injury. We knew why. We knew why we, he fell, but we didn't think he'd fall all the way to 14. When it <laughs> happened, though, I wasn't massively shocked. Yeah. I, th- I Last, once, once he got past, I think it was mm-hmm. Chicago. Yeah. It, it made Once sense. Once he got past seven. It made sense. And, there, and there's, no, year, there's no major red flag like mm-hmm. that. Maybe outside. No, there's no major red flag like that this year. Last year was a there's lot of. guys with injuries, but there's no big red flag like that. No, last and the only guy that would be like that would be his brother. Not, like last year was people The biggest one was Jerome thought. Robinson. Like, Shea, well, Shea went higher than I thought. Like mm-hmm. We didn't have him in the top 15. We didn't? I don't think so. Well, I know well, I You didn't. deleted all of our mock uh, drafts. No, it's in there. You just got to look 2018. Um, I put it under 2018. Here, I'll, I'll pull it up. Did I forget to share it with you guys? I, I just, think so. I just made it. Yeah, I think you just made it. You definitely did um, it. Because I kept it for that reason. Um, In our last mock draft, you had Shea to at 14. Oh, okay. You had him to the Suns because you had a trade gotcha. Um, with the Suns. Um, because let Here, me share think. that with me now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I I I remember that now. But when the Clippers took him, I don't think yeah, we're too shocked. Yeah, you have access to it. I shared it. It's 2018 NBA mock draft. Because hmm. I shared it with you and Dave. All right, let me check. Share it with me and Dave. Yeah. 
2018 mock draft? Mm-hmm. 2018 this NBA mock draft. Con- this is a great contact. <laughs> uh, okay, I got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I had... I don't think I had Shea Gilgis that high. Let's see. No, I had him 12. Oh, I yeah. don't remember that. Um, I was about to say, no one was shocked. In our... In our, mm-hmm. in our what's it called? In our uh, live mock draft, we had him exactly where he went. It was 12. Mm-hmm. Um, True. Clippers, we had Miles Bridges, and those two flipped. Uh, McHale went 10 to the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Um, the Knicks, we Wendell was there. I mean, we really didn't have anyone fall, weirdly. No, um, you're not. I mean, Trey Young, kind of. For maybe. me, for me, the big faller was Robert Williams because I had him at freaking 13. Oh, um, I mean, technically, if we're going off our mock draft, Mitchell Robinson. Yeah. Mitchell Robinson at 16 or 15 True. for the Wizards. We didn't um, go to the second round. I just, for me, the thing that, what I was going to oh, ask Oh, Bates you. Diop was the big, big faller. Because mm-hmm. you weren't too shocked by Mitchell Robinson because he was a high school player. But yeah. Kata Bates was like the huge faller that we were pissed off about. And the thing I was going to ask you is, let's say the draft plays out like this. Let's say Jarrett Culver goes four to the, let's say he goes four to the Lakers. And then let's say the Cavs keep the pick. I'm going to say if Culver's off the board, let's say they go DeAndre Hunter. Then the Suns, for the sake of argument, good pick, bad pick, they go with Brandon Clark. Then the Bulls go with Kobe White. How two two part question? How far do you think Darius Garland falls, and where does he go? And with the where does he go, is there going to be a team that if Darius Garland falls past seven, is there going to be a team that tries to jump <sighs> Why up and is grab he falling? him? I'm just saying, like let's say. The Lakers pick Culver over yeah. him. Let's say the Cavs, Darius. Yeah, they, they won't take him. Cavs DeAndre take Hunter Garland. is a guy they like Anybody, yeah. next to Culver or besides Culver. Sexton. So they take Hunter. Then the Suns, let's just, for the sake of argument, they go but with Brandon there's, Clark because no... they really like him. All right. And then the Bulls go Kobe White because of the promise. If that lays out, but I, how I, far do you think he falls? I just think that's a very unrealistic way mm-hmm. to, to look at it. I don't think that's happening. Uh, he's not going to go to the Hawks. He's not going to... I think someone trades up and gets him. I think he still goes top 10. Who do you think... Who I think do the, you Celt- think I think the Celtics could go after him with mm-hmm. their, their bevy of picks. I think the T-Wolves can go after him. Uh, if they're able to add Darius Garland, why the fuck wouldn't they? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're trying right to draft Teague got right Teague now. Yeah, I, I know. I know. And yeah. like, he's, like, that's he's, the only he's a fine, he's a fine player. He's not great, but... Um, He's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pistons too. I think people trade up for him. There, if he falls past the Bulls, something must be physically wrong with Garpax. Mm-hmm. Like something must. They must have fell, fallen down the stairs. <laughs> like it. It would be. A, 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 so you think the Bulls should take misstep. Garland over Kobe White? It's not even a discussion. A I am iffy on Kobe White being in the top okay. ten. Um, I think Garland's a top five player in this draft. I don't. I'm iffy on top. I don't think Kobe White's mm-hmm. in my top ten when we did our big board. Yeah. So no, I, 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 if the Bulls do that, they, something is, mm-hmm. it, we, we know something's wrong with Garpax, mm-hmm. but now something, <laughs> something would be, for sure, at least guaranteed wrong with Garpax. I just, with me, I see one of two situations playing out. I either see the situation that we just said, uh, it goes Culver, somebody not Darius Garland, Brandon Clark, Kobe White, or. It goes on the other side of, and this is depending on the Suns, Jarrett Culver, somebody else, Kobe White, because there are rumors that maybe they go Kobe White, the Suns at six. And then if that's the situation, the Bulls, like if Kobe White's already taken and Darius Garland's there, then if I'm the Bulls, I go with Darius Garland because we need that um, point guard. But, I mean, for me, he is the one guy that I feel like not because of injury, not because of anything that's like necessarily wrong with him, could just slip because a team decides to go with somebody else that they worked out and loved mm-hmm. over him. And he's a guy that I wouldn't be surprised. Like you if, said, if the someone, Celtics, if, I would love that if, if they someone, trade up and got him. If someone's falling, it's Kobe Webb, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Uh, th- and that's because I think teams— So one of the point guards is falling. I—, I, I if, well, if we have Kobe to pick White's a faller, a if we have to pick a single faller, mm-hmm. I would pick Kobe White. Okay. Um, I don't think Garland falls at all. Mm-hmm. Um, if we had to lay out the fallers, Garland, Sekou, Clark, mm-hmm. PJ, those are the fallers. Okay. 
I have Co- in, in one of mine, I have Kobe not going in the top 10. One mm-hmm. of my mock drafts. Really? Yeah. I would have Because just... I don't think he's a top 10 talent. Let's see. My biggest fall, like I would say Darius Garland would be my biggest faller because I've technically got him outside the top 10. Um, you do? Mm-hmm. That's idiotic. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not gonna say it on the air. I'll let you know mm-hmm. what it is. A, what, you could just even look at it if dumb. you wanted to. Yeah. But I'll let you know off because I don't want to spoil it for Saturday. You know who's the one? This is how I'll end this segment. You know who's the one prospect where I don't know where to freaking put him? Hmm. Jackson Hayes. I don't know where to put him because um, I don't. You love put his, him in the wrong place. That's for like, sure. Like I, I, if you're looking at my mock, Sean, I. I'm not even happy with that pick. That's yeah, probably going to change. There's, um, there's, because that's a terrible pick for them. We did have a similar thinking. If like, you, if, if, with, with with where you have them, we have a similar. Go thinking ahead and say it, because I'm going to no, change it. No, it's okay. I mean, I just he's the one person where I'm like, he fell. All right, how far is he going to fall? And then I put him somewhere. It's like I don't even like. I I would I be shocked him. if he fell past twenty one. Okay, so even if he was a. If he fell past the 20. Thunder, I'd be shocked. Okay. Um, but any final thoughts on e- anything in the draft? Anything with your mock that you want to express before we mm. get to Saturday? Any frustrations that you're dealing with? The biggest frustration is I just – I don't know how big of an effect the AD trade will have. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I am, not, I am not a guy – to create that trade, mm-hmm. right? I'm not. I'm not a GM. I don't think anyone has the ability to make a proper AD trade where all sides are going to benefit. Mm-hmm. Because with being that big of a name, that trade is going to be ripped to shreds in any way possible. Yeah. And getting that big of a name, you need to have a winner and you need to have a loser. And I think with the Kawhi stuff, it was easier to have a winner and loser with that because mm-hmm. yes, Toronto got Kawhi. But they Toronto was doing it out of desperation, and we didn't know what Kawhi was going to be doing because of how serious we possibly thought yeah. his injury could have been. And what's funny so, is the Spurs could end up trading DeMar DeRozan this offseason, the rumors are. Um, yeah, if that happens. But, I, I mean, at least with that, like, that that's probably the last big trade mm-hmm. there. And I, I would just I'm, – I'm, I, I think that – Again, AD finding a trade for AD is not my job, and it, mm-hmm. that's that was the biggest workaround. It's above your pay scale. Exactly. It was. It, <laughs> I don't get paid anything. Um. So that that was the biggest frustration for me mm-hmm. was trying to figure out what trades would happen. And I, I mm-hmm. think outside of AD, I don't think there are going to be big names moved. I don't think Clint Capella is going to get moved or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um. I think AD is the only big name that could possibly get moved. I think last year I counted it because Dave wanted to know. I think it was what four or five. Trades in the first round last year. I did count it. Um, um, now I'm starting to think it was three. It was either I three, four, or five. Well, there was the Luca. Mm-hmm. Um, there was the Clipper so trade. One. There was the Clipper trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the. Uh, I'm just gonna look it up. I got it. I got it right now. Uh, the Philadelphia trade. Mm-hmm. So so that was three. three. Um, was that one a trade? No. Um, that one wasn't a trade. I think it might be three. Yeah. Um. Uh nope that wasn't that yeah. didn't count on the on next draft one day the thirty four yeah the yeah. on draft day trade. yeah it was just one or, okay. it was just three yeah because I, mean, I think also, there was I think there was five in the second round because that's also another thing like of course we look at this draft class and it's like because of the fall off it's like oh there could be more trades this year but honestly will there be a lot of trades this year will teams be reluctant to kind of move and say oh we're going to get the guy we want because it's this could be a draft where it could end up being like, hey, I like that guy. I'm going to trade up and get him. Kind of like how you with the 76ers traded up for Tyler Hero. Mm. Like, I could see the Celtics going like, hey, we really like him. Let's I trade just, up and get him. I did that Tyler Hero one just to have fun. <laughs> I mean, that was ridiculous. He's, he's not a top mm. 11 prospect. Uh, but, yeah, that was they just wanted to have fun with that one. But this is with got, those live ones, I mean, I love we it. don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I love it. Um, I love pe- playing the GM with every team and having that kind of power. But this my, is where my goal ahead. with that is just to fuck people over. It, it's just to win <laughs> Sean trades. Sean wants so, to piss people off, and I definitely lost that trade. <laughs> Dave, Dave beat me on that trade. Whoever trade I trade with, there was me. Yeah, you because that was the trade. one where you're like, aside, would you make that trade? And I was like, hey, Sean, if you really like the guy, go ahead and make that trade. <laughs> go ahead and make that trade, Sean. But yeah. this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you guys think about 
anything we talked about. The Lakers taking Jared Culver. Will he go to the Hawks because they really like him? The Brandon Clark rumors to the Suns. Will Jarius Garland fall? Let us know Jarius. what you guys are. Yeah, Darius. You, you said Jarius. I said Jarius. Darius Garland. Darius, not Jarius. Will Darius Garland fall if the Lakers take Jarrett Culver at four? Let us know what you guys think down below. 